Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daniel. If you're new here, welcome. If you're already a subscriber, I just want to say thanks a lot. I appreciate it. For you new guys, why don't you take a second, click that subscribe button, click that bell. That way you guys get notifications of new videos I'm putting out. I'm doing this daily. They're just workout videos. I'm following the uh, Trainer Road Build Plan, Sweet Spot uh, 2 High Volume. And today's workout is called Galena Plus 3. Consists of four by 20 minutes at 90% FTP with six minute recoveries in between. Ay caramba, this is gonna hurt. You guys are gonna see me suffering today. Um, again, just uh, give it a big thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, give it a thumbs down, leave a comment. You guys stay safe. Let's get into that workout. We'll see you out on the road. Peace. Second and four. Just gonna go through some of the spritzes we have. So the riders to look out for and their results so far, bear in mind about the time trial. It's a couple of very, very hilly stays in the mountain top finish. There's only been two real opportunities for this for the pure sprinters. So Viviani, two out of two, won both of the outlast sprint stages. Sabine of Bola Hansgrove, well he's had a two third places. Now we've got Bonifacio has had a fourth place as we look at Moresco's Palmares there. Two Giros, 48 victories. So a real prolific sprinter. He's only been pro since 2015, so still very young, but that is impressive. A lot of those victories, with the greatest respect to him, are at the lower level, but still, a win is a win. And uh, once he gets his nose in the wind, the year's very difficult to beat, but Viviani so far has shown a clean a pair of heels to it. But uh, Sasha Modelo, of EF Education first, improving. First he was fifth, and then second place. Uh, Danny Van Poppel, a disappointing 15th, but then a fifth place. Uh, Pedersen from Trek C, I'm trying to watch out for him. He was struggling yesterday, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, 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 yo, 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 on off the back. Really feel the pain, the Danish road race champion, but if he gets it right, he has got a real kick on. He's already had a top 10 and 9th. Jens Bouchard of Lotto has had a sixth. Belletti of Androni, he's very quick too, seventh and an eighth, and then Gibbons of the Mention Data, he's had a seventh. And then Jeffy Drucker, who's an outside bet, has had a tenth. And then Clement Venturini of Ejutua, he's had a six place there, the sprinters look out for, and that's how far we've done so far, 32 kilometers, and the gap of 2 minutes and 44, and they're not being let, let out the front too much, Rob, are they? And uh, I think you can just see the pace has dropped off a little bit, I think they're now swinging into that, uh, the wind's still coming off the sea, but maybe just into their paces a little bit, you can just see the change of direction, showing the wind's coming to the left, and that's, yeah, just a, a little bit more across, you know, obviously there is absolutely zero protection for these riders, so any wind that is coming off the sea is going to be hitting the riders with, with whatever force it is, it's pretty much full force, um, but uh, you know, saying right at 10, 12 kilometers an hour um, earlier today, hoping for a little bit of a, a build on that, but uh, you know, a lot of it just depends on on the terrain. If it's slightly uphill, there are a few drags, you know, around 20, 25 kilometers to go. There is some, a real higher open drag, um, and if the wind does pick up and they're uh, riding hard on the front, then that could put, uh, put a few riders under pressure further back. Here's a look at these, some of these beautiful sandy beaches that stretch from mile up on mile. As we uh, head north along the Tyrrhenian coast, this is out uh, the Calabria. And there we go. Absolutely spectacular views. All of this will be within sight of the riders for the vast majority. Of they couple of little trips inland, and they very soon swim back onto the main coast road through the feed zone at around 75 kilometres. And then in the second half of the race, we've got these two intermediate sprint classifications. Work Club, Guardia, Primontes y Marina. And then the second one with 25 kilometers to go at Santa Maria de Cedro. So they're the hotspot sprints. And imagine we might see Elia Viviani in action, just taking a couple of points from behind, because this is one of the stages where there will be a lot of points on offer. This is a stage of low difficulty. It's a one-star stage. So maximum points on offer for the uh, Maglia and a lot of points. You know. Yeah, you know, certainly that, that first intermediate sprint, uh, 62.8k to go, uh, that's, you know, that will obviously give him a decent amount of time to be able to uh, to recover from that. You know, the second one comes after 133k racing, 4.7k to go. Might, might, you know, if, if he's there, I'm sure, again, we'll see him follow across the line and not really push too hard for that, just to try and pick up some easier points, just to keep, keep that lead 
had a little bit to a buffer, but for him, being in the fourth important stage win track, he comes fourth in the Giro in total, third here at this year's race after a stage of two and three. He said that's extremely sharp, hasn't he? Very, very sharp indeed. Even when, uh, well, we saw that, uh, well, I use the word transgression in the, in the right in the right tense now, in the right way, uh, we saw that very, well, that kind of, very, very kind of, uh, well, extreme line that, Deviation for the diversion. Yeah, diversion, deviation, whatever you want to call it. But he went from one side of the road across to the, the other and he lacked. He wasn't disqualified because somehow Viviani managed to squeeze past yeah, him, kick it he, in. He, 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 stage. He, he didn't close him right down against the barriers, uh, fortunately, because you know Viviani was coming very quick uh, up the uh, up the right hand side against the barriers. The barrier was also, one of the doors was actually open by the looks of it. It was just jumping out of there, wasn't it? Uh, which was a little bit uh, sketchy at the time. But yeah, I, I think uh, you know, the fact that uh, he ended up third on that stage anyway, uh, the, the judges, they left it, uh, left it as was. And uh, the, the result stood. Yeah, the only rider who did impede was the only went up to win. So uh, did impede Modelo, who carried a bit of extra speed and came through for second place on that day, but uh, Bennett getting stronger and stronger. <coughs> he played an influential part on the stage that was won to uh, Santa, or to Calpe Gironi, of course. The stage won by Tim Bellis, where he had a couple of teammates. Davy Formola was up there, but it was actually Sam Bennett who rounded the corner with around 400 metres to go. He climbed at the first part of that run into the line very, very strongly, dropping off Patrick Conrad and the Delphi Formula in a very, very good position. So Sam Bennett clearly feeling extremely strong. It's got a lot of zip. A couple of third places in the Giro d'Italia last year. Added two already in this uh, in this race. Not a lot of, of opportunities for the sprinters in the 2018 edition of the Giro. As we see the peloton just rolling by. Colour order, UAE Team Emirates. And then we've got Team Sky, Borla Hans Grouts. Look at all the colour from the AG2 Arna Mondia, Bahrain, Marida. Excuse me. So some real colour work going over there. All of the main protagonists, all the main GC contenders, making sure that they've got everybody around them, that they've looked after, they cannot take any chances at all. Because if one team wanted to put this in the gutter, it could make things very, very difficult. But uh, so although you'd like to think for the Richardson Scott team and Simon Yates, it will be a steady day. It's a day that cannot relax, they can never sort of take the eye of the ball whatsoever, especially with the wind the way it is, it can be very, very dangerous. If it does, yeah, if it does pick up and uh, you're right to say, if a team decides that they're going to, to have a bit of a dig, put riders under pressure, as we saw the other day with uh, Team UAE, uh, they uh, they caught a few people by surprise and uh, you know, threw the cat amongst the pigeons, put one or two, three or four, five or six even riders you know, an awful lot of uh, people really, really were struggling. And uh, I can't afford to, to relax too much because, uh, yeah, if that does happen, you know, it should all be okay on a, on a day like this, but uh, you can just do without that added pressure and, uh, and stress. You certainly can. It's a place to be. It's looked after by your team. It's out of the wind. It's all about teamwork and, uh, you know, having you know, obviously, you, you, you have your, your domestics and your super domestics who drop back to the to the pizza van and bring well, up the well, pizza. We, uh, we, 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 again, the Giro, the Tour de Italy is is about racing. It's about it's about culture. It's about uh, exploring the most beautiful, varied areas of Italy. It's also about cuisine. And, uh, we've got a super domestic in the form of Adam Blythe, who's brought us a pizza here at the Country Booth, which is very very kind. So thank you to uh, Adam Blythe. He knows his place. Just taking, a, taking a few days off to hang around in this neighborhood. Yeah. But we've uh, got some fuel, and he's right out in front. We'll certainly need some fuel. Their gap has come down now to 1 minute and 48 seconds. I wouldn't be surprised if they just knocked it off a little bit to let this go out again. They certainly won't want to bring this breakaway back just yet. As the veteran Spaniard, I'm Kurt Bellisau, on Trek, Sega's radio team, he's been with nearly a decade now, just rises out the side. This is one of these very small rises on this course today, essentially pan flat, save for a couple of little dips, a little plateau near the end they will we'll climb up to, and then gain a few metres before they drop back down into the fish. Maxim Belkov, very, very aerodynamic, a very strong rider, big ruler is Maxim Belkov, again, 33 years of age, extremely experienced, 
been with Katusha since uh, 2012, in fact. Before that was with the Macron Soleil, and then uh, the Italian ISD nearly set up. A very consistent rider. Again, multiple appearances at the Giro. This is his sixth time he's been here at the Italian race. And the Katusha Alpacet still searching for that elusive stage win. As we fly by the group of the Mario Rosa. Not sat too far from the front is Simon Yates. What a debut Giro d'Italia really is for him. He's come in leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. His time trolling has improved as well. He's up there in the individual time from the top 10. At the start, 7th place in Jerusalem, top 10 in the individual time trial in Paris Nice this year. He's had a couple of very good wins as well. Now his trajectory to this, this Grand Tour, a steady build up in uh, the Tour of Valencia. And then he went over to the Abu Dhabi Tour, Billy getting the clocks is in there. Of course the Abu Dhabi Tour, essentially a sprint fest. Then on to Paris Nice where he took a stage win and second overall. That progression continued in the Vuelta Catalunya. But again, he took another stage en route to fourth place. And he kicked back, and now he's in the Giro d'Italia. In the pink jersey, absolutely wonderful. Looking good, he's feeling as strong as ever. So there we go, that's the helicopter view. Back of the peloton, riders Bardiani dropping back. So Astana as well. Now well, we've got a guest in the booth. He's been uh, cooking up a storm. He's been cooking up a storm in the bunch sprints over the last few years. Former British road champion, immaculately coiffured hair as ever. He's here spending a couple of days at Giro as a pundit. Now, Alan, thank you very much for coming into the booth. Thank you very much for the pizza. Uh, it's, a, it's a long Monday, but uh, no, not many days for sprinters in this is Giro d'Italia. But this one has Sprint Fest written all over it. Do you think any of the army can be? Mm, I think it's going to be a hard push. But yeah, the only thing is at the moment is that the sprint teams aren't that strong here apart from the quick So the only thing that might happen is quick will really put all the if all comes blazing into this final and they might lose a lot of men quickly, I don't think they will, but if they do it might put Ellie in a bit of a backseat position, especially with a fast downhill coming into the finish, so you might find yourself if you use too many guys too early, a bit too far back, but I can't really see it happening, I think he's a uh, strong favourite, he is for me anyway today. I mean he's a different rider this year isn't he? It was a bit of a surprise signing for Quick Step Fours when he moved across the sky, he had a couple of wins there, got that big win in the Giro d'Italia, but he seems to have really flourished off the back of that, of that Olympic success. He's always got like a youth out of confidence and, uh, and now is one of the top tier sprinters in, in, in the world. He is, yeah. He's, um, since that Olympics, he's just kept growing and growing and growing. And I think, you know, Quicks have really got behind him compared to this guy. I think their main focus is the GC rides and, you know, the Grand Tours where Ellie is, he can win basically any race you put him into almost. Uh, really targeting race and not just putting him into races and build numbers and maybe have a sprint on the sprint there. They are solely sending him to races where he can break and win. And um, yeah, show it this year. I think he's up to eight wins or something this year already and it's you know it's not even halfway through the season yet so flying and obviously super happy in uh, in quick step. Another fantastic sign in quick steps. Yeah definitely yeah Patrick the first. Obviously he's got a little nose for a decent fire rover isn't he? Yeah. He's a pretty uh, shrewd signer of talent. And what are your thoughts on, uh, on Maximilian Schachmann as well? What a talent. I mean, he's a previous uh, number 23 time trial champion of the world. He can, he's got not a bad kick on him. He clearly can climb well, gets in the moves. I mean, a real utility rider who just seems to be having fun on his bike in this year. He does, yeah. And I think that's the main thing for these guys, you know, is that you never see Quick Step really doing anything wrong. They're always doing things right and they're always enjoying winning. But you don't, you rarely see that in a team. It's always quite. They are very serious, but everything seems quite robotic amongst other teams. You know, they're always very serious, they're always got a plan and these guys have but you can see now he's just sat down there on the line, he's just relaxed and you know chilling, he's not sat with running at the line and yeah, it just seems relaxed and a happy place to be and I think that shows in the line's performance. I mean what what's you is the most important thing there's as many contributing factors to getting a lead out right, to getting your, your protective sprinter in the right place. But what what's you, what having good legs? 
They'll feel it coming to the finish. So I think, you know, kind of keep them in the best position, not trying to slip too far back and trying to save as much energy as you can, you know, trying to stay as fresh as possible. But it's not always easy, you know, if you're the, you're the strongest team there and you look to do a lot of the work, it's not always easy to, to do that. But, you know, I'd say that to me, I think it's just trying to stay as fresh as possible for as long as possible. I think that's sort of one of the things we to just to, again, Vivian, the Atmat player, would say we just look at the composition of Quick Sip, Paul Shackman, Seneschal, Steve Ar, Sabatini, Morkov, Cavania, Loris Capecci, and Elia Viviani himself. I think some of the interesting interviews with Viviani, of course, he's got a team built around him for this race. They've got no rider for the GC, save for the surprise package in the form of Maximilian Shackman, who again is just, I think every day we're kind of seeing what, what, he, what he can do even more. But Viviani, He's got that ridiculous kind of track speed and track run and support when he's trying to tussle for the finales of these big races. But for me, it was the added endurance that he's got when he's up in the mix in, in Game Wilgen, for example. He's confident in the classics, but to come into these sprints knowing that you've got that real sharpness, knowing you've got a team around you, but with that added kind of road endurance, it's really valuable, isn't it? It is, yeah, massively. And I think this year especially, you know, doing Game Wilgen, coming so close after such a long day, and being competitive at that end, it wasn't just, you know, hanging on to that, uh, I think he was third there, third or second place, he was, you know, moving up and he just got a sprint wrong, but, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable to see how, how much stronger he's got this year and the confidence he'll get from, from running these last two sprints going into the day will be unbelievable, and like you say, with the track craft there, he's, he's very clever on the bike, he'll never really do anything wrong, he'll never put his nose in the wind when he doesn't need to, he's, he's switched on and a clever other bike rider. All about that finish to Elat the other day when uh, Sam Bennett, let's be fair, Sam Bennett, any other day, and I think he'll look at the footage of the bit himself, he was a fair old line deviation. Yeah. Did, made, just about made contact with Viviani, that's because Viviani had to squeeze around the inside. I mean, the ability to check, kind of, in a, in a split second, kick, and then go again, I mean, that, that says something else. That's just, I think, just an illustration of a, of a point where it was really part of a lot of pressure. But that confidence to kind of, I, I thought he was off to be honest with you, mate. I really, really did. But uh, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that particular finish? Yeah, I think, you know, from being able to go, you do a thousand watts on his wheel maybe, and he's doing that for 10 seconds. And then you go from that to doing, sitting down, having like a, a half a second wait, and then going back up to 40, 1500 watts again. It is, it's impressive. Not many people can do that this day and age. I mean, you're doing a thousand watts for sort of 10 seconds on a wheel. It, it's not easy, you might be quite fast after that. You can see how he is just straight down, sitting beside a little half second and just back up and uh, yeah, he's just got the legs straight at the moment. It's, it's good to see. I just, I just to rip down the kind of uh, the riders that I think potentially do well, assuming these guys get caught. The lead has gone out, out again now, it's so 2 minutes and 25 seconds, but I think the peloton. Uh, the impetus of uh, Mitchell and Scott and Quickstep Floors have pretty much got this in control. But who do you see at the moment, the rider that you feel could push Viviani the closest? There's obviously things like luck that, that play a part. Is the team's not quite getting the lead out right. There's some riders you expect in there that, that quite often aren't hard to do to pure. Stronger and stronger, but those guys are feeling it. It's a little bit easier through the day. They'll be able to punch it out, sprint out. So yeah, Van Poppel and... Um, Marisco, Jacko Marisco. Yeah, I mean, Marisco's tiny little run, a real ball of muscle. It's got a ridiculous acceleration, but again, can't go for quite as long as early Viviani. And we saw, I think it was stage two, and Marisco went very early, opened up a gap uh, in Tel Aviv, you know, within a couple of seconds, uh, then started to fade towards the line. But again, that was an illustration where Viviani kind of had to kick again. He didn't, he didn't mean to open his, his sprints up quite as early as he did, but he had to to get the slip through the Marisco. So he's, a, he's definitely a, danger, a dangerous rider. But of course, you get sprinters with kind of different sets back produce. As we just look at the uh, Bishop rider classification, Richard Carapaz of Ecuador and Movistar is uh, in the lead in that classification. Great riding by young Ben O'Connor there, moving up to second at 16 seconds in his debut Grand Tour. I mean, uh, sprinting aside for a moment, it's been a fantastic uh, tour for the younger ones. Carabas coming through, Ben O'Connor coming through, the emergence of, of, uh, of course, Maximilian Shackman as well. And, you know, Yates, although he's, a, you know, he's written for four or five grand tours, first time for him at the Giro d'Italia, and first time in the pink jersey. It's a pretty remarkable run for Yates, isn't it? It is brilliant. Like, yesterday I was shocked to see him attack, really. I think even he said he's like, were, mate, to be honest with you. He didn't get the go-ahead on the TV either, and that's why I love about it, is he just took the initiative, he's a bike racer, he's not a robot, he's just gone, right, yeah, I can do this, and he's gone for it, and that's what, that's why we're all bike racers at the end of the day, we love it, and we love racing, and that's what he's done there, and he's, 
he wrote that race perfection, never looked under stress. He was always in the right position, never closing gaps, never wasting energy. He was always, to me, he was always in the, in the hot seat, really. And yeah, what a ride, man. Yeah, I think that's one thing that's easy to forget in these days of power meters, etc. It's all well and good, of course, the amount of data that riders have in the minute it enables you to get the best out of yourself, analyse your kind of training. But one thing that, as you said, quite rightly, that you should never forget is that riding a bike is, all, is about feel, it's about enjoying it, and it's also about pure instincts quite often. Uh, and it's good to see that that kind of race craft isn't lost amongst the younger generation coming through. It is, yeah. I mean, how many years they looked at today is the be all and end all. There's a lot of things going on where people are signed just off the numbers now, and it's great and everything, but it doesn't. To me, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't show how you can race. You might be the strongest guy in the world, but you can't move up for a place after having what's the point of having this power? So, yeah, you've got guys like Elliot. He's a proper bike racer as well. You know, he goes up against the kid. He's not got a box in the top, but he can position himself nine times out of ten better than uh, Marcel Christian. You certainly can. Well, Adam, thanks very much indeed for yeah. that uh, insight into uh, particularly the sprinting. And uh, you go back and uh, but get some pizza a bit later on, that would be absolutely wonderful. And uh, so Rob Nails can slot himself back in after having a little bit of a break. Meanwhile, the pads are still being led, still 114 kilometres to go of today's stage. Two minutes and 32 seconds for that breakaway. Was, was he good? Uh, he wasn't bad.